Hello all. I wasn't sure if I should do this video. Comic book reviews aren't really my channel's thing and I'm also not sure if my opinion will be that popular. But given I've never really cared that much about having a popular opinion, I decided just to go for it. Now I've been reading comics for over 40 years and have drawn and written them myself, many times just for fun, but also self-published. But I haven't had anywhere near the success that Eric has had. And more power to him for that. He's worked damn hard for it and invested heavily in creating Isom. And to be fair, it's a pretty iconic moment in indie comic history. I mainly bought Isom 1 because I thought it's important to support him, despite it being really quite expensive at $70. And whilst the costs drop for number two, $60 is still a stretch for a single comic. Still, it mattered. Now I'm only going to do a broad review. There may be small spoilers, but I'll try to keep them as minimal as possible. Briefly about Isom 1, I thought it was okay. I didn't connect with Avery or Isom, the main character. He seemed a bit callous, based purely on his inner monologue. It read like he wasn't interested in getting involved, rather than there was a reason that he thought he couldn't get involved. And there's a very definitive difference there. It also felt like the comic was a little too busy trying to set up the universe when it should maybe have focused more on him. The art was good, though a bit empty, uh, and I'll cover that more when I talk about issue two. One of my main issues was the dialogue because I was rewriting it as I read it, so I found that difficult to immerse myself. To be brutally honest, I wasn't sure I was going to get issue two, but at the end I did, and I got cover B. And no, not for the sexy woman, I just liked it the most of the four. As you'll know from watching my other videos, many of my opinions regarding pop culture align with Eric's. I have been watching his channel for a while, and I know a lot of people have been trumpeting this as being anti-woke, but it really isn't. It's just a comic book, and it's intended to be fun and engaging read, and I'm going to treat it that way in my review. And I'll be totally honest with my opinions, possibly to my own detriment. To start with, in both cases, the comics arrived really quickly, surprisingly so. Both in mint condition, because it was so well protected by the branded packaging. When issue 2 arrived, I did wonder what the postage cost would have been if it wasn't branded, because $35 for issue 1 and $25 for issue 2 is quite a lot, given I'd mailed a comic twice its size for the same cost. And I do wonder if the pricing will be a sticking point for Eric's future success. Physically, both issues are solid and sturdy, really nicely printed on really good quality paper, and the colours really sing, so there's good contrast there. I'm going to talk about the art first, since that's what usually draws me to pick up a comic. The art is by Cliff Richards. No, not that one. It's very nicely rendered, and the penmanship is really good. It feels a lot more complete than the first issue, though there is the odd page that looks a little emptier than maybe it should. There are some lovely angles used, which are really well drawn, and the layout is great. It had a proper storytelling to it, which I really appreciate being a fan of George Perez and John Byrne's style. The use of shadows is fantastic. My one negative is that the figures can be a little stiff at times and can lack dynamism. And to be honest, there is one panel, just the one, mind you, that I'd have asked him to completely redraw. The tone of work on the colouring by Gabe Altaibi is really good too. It evokes the change in environment and doesn't overwhelm the drawing like some I've seen. Instead, it complements it beautifully. The story itself has some issues once again. It feels like it's setting yet more stuff up and dangling more mysteries, whilst really only one thing was resolved from issue one, and that was why Isom quit. There are also a couple of cutscenes that interrupt the flow a little, mainly because they end so abruptly. In particular, there's one moment where a character turns up from nowhere in a splash page with no introduction, which was a bit jarring, and I looked back because I thought I'd missed something. Isom's reason for quitting makes sense, but for some reason that part didn't have the drama and emotional impact I felt it should have. Some of that was the pacing, but I think part of it was also the dialogue, which I will get on to. Avery, Isom himself, feels much more engaging in this issue, and the callousness I felt from the first is gone, thankfully. I still don't think his reason for quitting really explains that in a monologue from issue one, though. He also routinely drops the odd enigmatic statement. In fact, the book is full of people being enigmatic, which is a bit frustrating, to be honest. 
I appreciate Eric is trying to lay the seeds for what follows and doesn't want to show his hand too much. But I needed a little bit more to entice me back because none of it really intrigued me enough. And certainly not as much as the segment with Norfrica in issue one. The pacing feels a little off. Some bits feel like they take longer than they really need to. And other parts feel a little abridged. Back to those cutscenes again. But my biggest issue, and probably the wellspring from where most of my other concerns arise, is the dialogue. As I say, in issue one, I was rewriting it as I read it, which was distracting. It is better here, but it just doesn't really feel natural to me. There are times in speech bubbles where contractions are used and then not used. And I could understand it if that was the trait of a particular character, but almost everyone does it. I'll give you a couple of examples. Are you alright? I would not have let that go on if I knew he would do that. I'll be fine. Lincoln, I'm sorry. I didn't think he would be this bent out of shape. I apologise for my voice acting, by the way. But that just feels a bit robotic to me. It feels like it should be more like... Are you alright? I wouldn't have let that go on if I knew he'd do that. I'll be fine. Lincoln, I'm sorry. I didn't think he'd be this bent out of shape. There also seems to be a lot of unnecessary information. It's almost like the script of a radio play where everything has to be explained in more detail than we really need. For example, in a casual conversation, I remember you bringing up the fact that you knew him. What on earth have you gotten yourself into? Wouldn't that be better as, I remember you saying you knew him, but what on earth have you gotten yourself into? I mean, it's not a perfect example, but you get what I'm saying. And the pages with Alpha Core are a particularly severe example of this. I appreciate this is only Eric's second book and he's doing a really good job overall and a fantastic job with the publishing and his attitude is just great. At the end of the day, he decided to stop complaining about what we were getting from the mainstream and get out there and do it himself. It's an attitude to be applauded and supported in my book and he thoroughly deserves to have been as massively successful as he has been. So I'm enthused about the project, probably more than the book itself. Overall, the comic is fine. It's an improvement on issue one, but I think it could still do with some editing, pruning and attention to the dialogue to make the conversations feel more natural and flow better. To be honest, if I'd picked up issue one in a comic shop, I'm not sure there was enough to bring me back to buy issue two. However, I will continue to support Eric and will get issue three to complete the arc. And you never know, when I get issue three, things might fall into place and it might feel like a better story. I don't think it should work that way because you should have a reason to want to come back. But I'm definitely up for supporting it. Anyhow, I'll leave it there. I know I may get a hammering for this, but I'm afraid I'm not going to blow smoke up Eric's ass because he's someone I respect. I have to be honest, or what's the point? As always, I welcome your comments, even if they are to tell me I'm talking bollocks. However, if you're going to be a dick or abusive, I will just ignore you. If you've enjoyed this video... Please like and subscribe and thank you very much for listening. I do appreciate it. Peace out.